Okay. Anyway, John. Yeah. Welcome. I'm, I'm really, <laughs> really <laughs> happy to have you on my show, and especially I, I'm looking forward to asking you questions mm -hmm. because, oh like, like, last for a few months. Okay. While we we've been through this program, you keep returning and asking yeah. us stupid questions like, "What's the problem you're solving? <laughs> Who cares?" Right. I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> yeah. So. Anyway, um, glad to have you here. Uh, can you t tell me briefly what do you do now? You have like seems to have so many different things going on. So what's your like main thing, and what other things that you do? Um, so what do I do? I, um, as I would describe, my day job is Springboard, um, which I run in London and Cambridge. Mm -hmm. um, but I, uh, on a secondary level, help other people run programs. Uh, which include uh, Startup Wise Guys, mm -hmm. uh, Ignite 100, uh, 11 in Bulgaria, and uh, Tech Stripe in Moscow. But, but I mean, the, the bit that I do on a fairly regular basis as well is just try to help other people set up such programs. Um, whether I have, a, as I describe, a financial interest in it, in it or not is irrelevant to me. Uh, my primary motivation is how can I help more startups across Europe to achieve their potential. Um, whether it's me helping indirectly or directly, it doesn't really make a job difference to me. So basically, you work on one incubator or accelerator program, which is Springboard, right? Yeah. And then there is like a dozen or so other programs that you're kind of involved. Four other four? ones. Yeah. Four. Okay. And. I by the way, if you go to Angelis, there is like lots of lots of these kind of programs. Yeah. Uh, especially last in just this year in, in Kiev, there is I think three. Wow. There was one in January. That's East two. Labs. That's two more than yeah. London. Well, you have Springboard Mobile, right? Yes, yeah, the same thing. But okay. and then you have screens. Ignite, Ignite, Ignite something. But that's in northeast of England. Ah, okay. So you have one program in London. There's Seacam and the Springboard. Yeah. And there's, that's it. Okay. And SIGCAMP are a pan-European program, so really, I mean, hmm. okay. so, so even I got, anyway, you, got three Ukraine, times, you have three times more accelerators. Exactly, exactly. We have such a huge like, you know, market <laughs> and, and so great number of entrepreneurs yeah. that we have three programs as of today. Maybe they will be. Four tomorrow. Yeah, quite possibly. <laughs> so, how did you get started with Springboard? Like, did you like, did you had, hundred million sales exit? Like, no, I I, I uh, hacked a program. You what? I hacked a program. Uh, meaning what? Um, so um, I was um, a VC for about three and a half minutes, and decided that being a VC kind of sucked. Um, so I decided, I, I used to invest seed funds of about a quarter of a million dollars, 250,000 pounds mm -hmm. type stuff. And I uh, found that maybe I was just a really bad VC, but I considered a lot of my investments to be very like, um, very expensive lottery tickets. Um, um, I had this premonition that actually instead of one, writing one big check for 250,000 pounds, I should write 10 smaller checks for mm -hmm. 25,000 pounds each. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I could work with them for three or four months and, and maybe they'd be better at the end of it. And then I realized that Paul Graham and Dick Cohen had already invented it, yeah. uh, which was why comedy and tech stars. So, um, like all good entrepreneurs, not that I perceive myself as an entrepreneur, I hacked. Uh, the process, which basically meant I went and cloned their versions. So I uh, emailed Paul Green, and Paul very kindly wrote back and said, I'm busy, everything you need to know is on the website. Um, but at least he responded, and given the number of emails he gets, that's something. Well, when, was, when was that? Like what, what? Uh, this was three years ago, 2009. Okay. Um, I then managed to have an indirect contact with David Cohen at Techstars mm -hmm. and um, flew to Boulder, Colorado for a 20-minute meeting with David Cohen and 
10 minutes into the conversation, he said, I kind of like you. Can I help? And essentially that helped me set up the Difference Engine, which was the first European acceleration program mm -hmm. uh, boot camp, um, which was started 2009, ran 2010-11. Um, and from that, essentially, it went from being publicly funded to privately funded and privately funded is what Springboard is today. Mm -hmm. You asked. So, so it's like a, a Springboard is a different name for the same thing? Essentially, yeah, there was, it was the same program, um, but the, uh, the funding source was completely different. Okay. Uh, and it was a cooler name. How, how many, how many like, teams have you have graduated from the program? I've, uh, across all the programs I've been involved in, I've helped graduate uh, 65 teams, I think, last count, um, which have gone on to raise in excess of uh, $15 million. 15? Well, five. So is it a Springboard and the, the other? Uh, different Engine, Springboard, um, Ignite 100, Startup Wise Guys. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. So, about. like, do you, do you consider this as a success or like, or not? Like, how do you, how do you judge how good you are? Like, I mean, how good the the program works? Um. So I think there's a couple of things I'd say. One is, the measure I use, I don't think, I know they're not the right measure. So the measure I use in the short term is how many teams at the end of the program go on to get funded. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the base number is about half of the teams, across all of them, mm -hmm. get funded. Um, I don't actually think raising money is actually a true definition of success for a founder. Um, I actually believe uh, building a business, having a product, people using it, are much better measures of success. Um, but then they're really difficult to create objective measures around. So how can I compare one program to another? Yeah. Uh, and so the notional idea of how many get funded and how much gets raised is the number that people use a lot. I, I'm not comfortable with it, even though I kind of hit the right numbers with myself. Um, I, I want to support a generation of entrepreneurs to go out and make kick-ass products and create. And like, do you see programs as a vehicle that helps do that, right? Um, I think programs are a good way of doing it. I think they're not the only way of doing it. I think people who run around and think that accelerators are the panacea, that uh, this will solve all of our problems. Um, I don't believe that's true. I think they represent a bit of a bigger system. Mm -hmm. I think uh, for every accelerator, you should be having seed funding. And if you've got seed funding, you should have other bits. Um, you should equally have active hack weekends, whether it's Garage 48 or Startup Weekends. I think there's a big gap. The bit I keep telling people about, and nobody listens to me, is I think there's something that's not an accelerator, but it's not just a weekend. There's something that fits between those two. Uh, some people call it a pre-accelerator. Mm -hmm. um, I think it may look like an accelerator in places where there isn't a lot of funding. So can you do it with like giving away equity? Can you create support structures? Um, so do, do I think they're successful? I, I think they achieve a goal. I think they connect angels with early stage teams, mm -hmm. which is really, really hard in Europe. I think it gets a lot of product built where people may not be able to do it. Um, the, the, the answer is, let's look back in five years' time and see if it really did make a difference. Uh, just, um, since you're, like, you're involved in one program and then in several others, yeah. that's why I keep, like, have more questions about this. I mean, like, there is, first thing is, like every, every community or, I don't know, every region kind of wants to have an accelerator, or yeah. so it looks like mm -hmm. Bulgaria, 11, yeah. Estonia, where we're here, yeah. is uh, wise guys and probably, mm -hmm. and game founders, yeah, yeah. and there is like a bunch of more, and Kiev again, mm -hmm. three, three of them. So, do you think it's like going to last, or this will like merge into like few, so the few like big one remains? Um, good question. Um, 
I think I think it would be very disappointing if any country in Europe could only find 10 teams that would be worthy of support. Yeah. Um, so why shouldn't there be, if there's 20 countries around Europe, why shouldn't there be 20 accelerators? So it might be like 50 yeah. in a few years. It could be. Um, I think um, whether you can make them commercially viable is a harder question to answer. Um, I think there is no different from any other ecosystem. It's hard to find an economic return at startup level. Mm -hmm. um, I think certain programs will do better than others. But I personally believe for those others that they still create a massive amount of economic value later down the stage that actually... Educate the teams yeah, yeah, yeah. and so on. I mean, in some respects, you're, you're right. It's actually about educating the teams. It's not about building businesses. Mm -hmm. yeah? Sometimes when you help 10 teams, half of them go on to get funding. And of those 10, or of those five that get funded, only a small proportion will turn into what you and I would call economics, business. well, businesses and or economic success. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that the five that don't go through a process and don't come out successfully haven't learned something in the process. And it's not the first thing they do, it might be the second or it might be the third. And guess what? Those people are now connected into the network that they wouldn't have been before. So I think it's really difficult. Um, I think there will be um, some that will come and go. There'll be some that will come and stay. Um, but even for the ones that come and go, even in the short period they're here, they will still create value, um, either through the education or provision of opportunity or just encouraging people just to try. Yeah. There is like, I was listening to you and uh, I remember reading this article in about US venture capital market. Yeah. The most of VCs like generate zero profits. Yeah. But still they like did spend all these venture funds yeah. somewhere, right? Yeah. So it might be the case with accelerators. If you will yeah. be like commercially successful, like return profits to investors, yeah. but most will probably not. Yeah, um, the, the, the upside is the amount of money that's being used in accelerators is a, the smallest proportion of investment capital in the world. This is why I will never be a rich man, because if I'm only investing really, really, really small sums of money, uh -huh. it's, it's like kind of, as I described, it's like playing poker with dimes or okay. with quarters, yeah? I'm never going to turn into a zillionaire. Somebody who's got a bigger stake that starts with $100, $1,000 bills has a great chance of actually losing or making a lot of money. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think that then you're absolutely right. I think we, we're still really early in the market, even in the US, which has been running longer. There is really only two or three which are considered to be able to demonstrate that can create economic returns for what they do. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, as I described, I think some of it's sometimes to do with investment, and some of it's just to do with just really making an impact. Look, say capital in Europe is really hard to get hold of. If this allows you to bridge, or at least give people a runway to do something, or to try, I think, I think it should be encouraged. But that's just me. I think, I, think, I think there's a risk that certain people might spend too much money and, and completely distort the market. Um, but markets, markets always find a level. Okay. Can you like, um, if somebody ask you, well, I ask you, okay. like, what's the the top three or top five programs in Europe? Uh, okay. Me, 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 and me. Hmm. Nice list. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, programs which have been running longer tend to do better. Um, more because it takes time to bed down into what you do. So as I described, the very first program I ran three years ago, I, I, I was making up as I went along. Uh, now, I help people 
What? I, I was I was making it up. I, I had no okay. idea what I was doing. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I made all my mistakes, and it all was, it's funny because if you actually ask any of the teams that participated in that program, they'd say he hadn't a clue what he was doing. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I've now run it enough times that I, I'm sitting in Estonia, uh, and my program's running in London. Yeah. I've now got a structure around it. I now have a bunch of really smart mentors who are massively supportive of what I do. So team programs that have run slightly longer tend to be much better prepared. Um, so the obvious ones which fall out of the system at that point clearly would be Sea Camp, Springboard, and Southern Boot Camp. Um, when you get to the next level, uh -huh. it's really difficult because um, Alex Farset, so um, Saul Klein set up uh, Sea Camp uh, five years ago. Um, I've been running his programs for three years, and Alex Farset's been running it for three years. The next number along um, have really only been running in a year, a year and a half, so it's really difficult to pick who would be next after number three. Okay. So, uh, again, you're involved with several programs, right? Yeah. And the, do you feel you like bring value to those programs? I mean, I know, like for instance, in uh, Wise Guys, like, yeah. you've been here maybe I don't know five, ten days out of like fifty yeah. days. So that's very generous of you. I'm not sure I did. Well, but. probably not. But <laughs> I was told that while I was absent, yeah, you were yeah, here. Yeah, so. I was there. Um, they brought a cardboard cutout and put it in the room. <laughs> John's yeah. here. Yeah. And okay. then a little swear machine that sat behind the. The, the box going, fuck, fuck, so, so, fuck. I mean, do you think it's like, makes sense? Why don't you like focus on springboard and like, uh, put all your effort in one place instead of sprinting across the... Because then I'm only helping 10 teams. Okay. Yeah. I mean, across all of the programs I'm helping. Uh, so this year I've helped 20, 30, 40, 50, uh, 60, about 60 teams. Next year, I will help probably double that. Now, uh, this is what I'm saying, I'm, I'll never be a rich man, I'm not very smart. Um, I much prefer to create opportunities for more people. Is, is it better to help 10 teams and do it really, 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 really well? Or is it better to help 120 teams and do something which is as good, but not just as good. Yeah, my, my motivation sits with, how can I help more? Okay. Yeah, um, and actually, look, at the end of the day, running these programs is, bluntly, it's not that clever. It's not that smart, yeah? There's a way of doing it. There's a way of mixing people. There's kind of, there's a bit which basically is about a process, getting from A to Z, yeah? And that's maybe simplifying it too much. And if you get the right people who are inspired to try and do the right thing by startups, mm -hmm. over a period of time, I mean, I'm not smart. I've been doing this for three years. And that puts me in the top 1% of people in Europe in these programs. But I've only been doing it three years. Yeah. So there's an opportunity for me to help support and educate other people for them to do stuff as well. Yeah. This is why, as I described, I've helped set up 12 programs, but I'm only involved in five, yeah? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a way, look, I teach my kids, my teams, to be open and transparent and to be helpful and to bend over backwards and to talk to rivals. I can't preach that and then not do it myself, yeah? Okay. Oh. That's just me. Yeah, but, yeah. It's mad, but it's true. And it works. It's a really cool business model. Yeah, and you have to travel all back and yeah, forth all I, the time. Yeah, I spend a lot of... As somebody described to me recently, where do you live? And I said, 2B. That's the seat at the front beside the eye. So you're, you're flying business class? No. Oh, well, actually, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a terrible secret that Ryanair has a business class seat, which nobody knows exists, which is actually the front row. Okay, so you don't have to pay for business class to sit there? You, you pay six or seven pounds, I think, to ah. sit in the front row. Okay. 
But when you're flying to Estonia yeah. or to Vilnius or somewhere a bit further, yeah. uh, spending an extra eight quid so you can open your laptop yes. as opposed to getting squashed behind the seat, okay. it means I get three hours of work done. Yeah, and um, just to finish the topic of programs, there is, I, I've seen it here and I've seen it in other, like, in our uh, programs that there is, like, right now there is um, there, all these programs, then there is a demo day, and then there is, like, nothing else. Correct. So the, the ecosystem that exists, like, in it's America. It's terrible, yeah. isn't it? Yes. It's rubbish. It's like creating little startup lemmings. And they run towards a cliff, and at the end of day exactly. 91, they throw themselves off the cliff and then say, We're really going to get funded, and then they don't. Yeah, I agree. It's a big problem. Um, I think uh, I, I know it's a big problem, and it's something I regularly try and talk to other people about to try and fix. Um, I know the stuff we're doing, we're moderately good at getting teams funded, um, but it's not, 90 days doesn't fix all the problems. The, the model, I, I, I call it a, a three plus three model. Um, what does it mean? And the three, first three months are effectively about trying to support and encourage people to build product and try to get product done in 90 days. And then essentially you have a demo day and it is what it says, it should be a demo. Yeah, mm -hmm. not PowerPoint or, or this is what I promise I'm gonna do or by day 90 you should be done. And then essentially there should be a, a runoff of another 90 days where you might even get some more money, but in that period, it's about engaging with customers, it's about getting into the market. It's Building product. Uh, iterating on the product, if yeah. you wanted to use lean type stuff. So, A, can you build something? So one's about product, and the second one's about market, yeah? Um, I think there's a big differential, as you already know, between the amount of funding that's available in the US and what's available in Europe. Um, I it's think, smaller in Europe, right? Oh, but a little <laughs> bit. I think, I think I once read an article, and I used the quote, I don't know if it's true or not, that there's about, for every dollar there is in Europe, there's about five dollars in the States. Okay. And actually, most of the five dollars is actually in Silicon Valley, so it's even more work. Um, but it, what it does say is, your ability to raise funding is much harder, so the notional idea of you do a Techstars or Y Combinator model and you do 90 days and then you suddenly run out the room and people are throwing money at you. Mm -hmm. Isn't going to happen in Europe. So people have to be much more geared up for, well, what do I do next? Yeah. Or what is it I need to do in the program to make sure that if only the top 10% of teams get funded, how am I going to be the top 10? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I totally agree with that. Um, one more thing. One more thing. Yeah. Steve. Steve. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I probably watched too much keynotes yeah. while preparing for the demo day. Um, so anyway, there is like 60 teams went through the program. You, you were mentoning, mm -hmm. right? And I, I really um, I like how you do that. And um, there is a bunch of people watching this, well, will be watching yeah. this. And uh, so if you can, I don't know, give a five minute crash course, like. Typical, <laughs> typical errors, or how do I like, prepare, like how to improve my chances to get in program, whatever. Something that you keep telling probably every For every time okay. you go to the program, you, you, you probably give the same. So is this to get into programs, or is this at the end of programs? No, it's the beginning. Like how okay, how do, how do you get into a program? Um, you 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 don't wait, which is what you did. You don't really what? Well. You don't wait until the application process, okay. which is what you did really well, which has harassed me um, prior to the application. Make sure that if you are anywhere near anybody that's anything to do with the program, you go and get in their face. So when you review a bunch of applications, you just get lots of paper, yeah? yeah. And sometimes it's really difficult to differentiate between somebody who looks smart on paper and who really is smart. Um, uh, most entrepreneurs are hustlers and you should be able to find a way to hustle or to hack a way to make sure that people know of you without necessarily the application. Yeah. And I know that with Y Combinator, one of the things that they, 
they do a lot is they basically say, can you find people who've been through YC before, or do you know people that know people, mm -hmm. whether it's Haj or Paul or whatever. Um, that, that actually demonstrates a hustle bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of first part. The second part I strongly believe in is, so that's people. And the second was to do with product. I think the notional idea of people turning up and saying, I've got this great idea, and I want to do your program, I tend to say, join the back of the queue, please. Yeah? There are other people who have already started doing what they're doing. And even if it's rubbish, I prefer to see some level of commitment from a team to say, we've tried to do something, even if it is rubbish. Yeah. So even if they change it completely mid mid program. Oh, uh, that has uh, is not important. I remember like the first our first two weeks in the program yeah. when like uh, everybody was uh, saying that like every day you got new reasons why it doesn't work. Yeah. Can it possibly ever fucking yeah. work? Yeah. So it might change. Yeah, so no, it will I, change. I, uh, look, the vast proportion of them change. Actually, most of them don't change massively. There's not often you have a team. I had one team last time I who stopped what they were doing. I think it was about three o'clock in the afternoon of the first day. Okay. Um, which and they hadn't even done a mentoring session. They basically came to me and said, "Our idea is really bad." And I said, "I agree. It's terrible." And they said, "We want to do something else." And I said, "What?" And they explained, and it seemed like an interesting space. And I said, "Yeah, cool. Let's do it." Um, I think people shouldn't be uh, wedded to the idea itself. Um, most good ideas evolve in some form or fashion. But what I, I think, so coming back to the same question about people, mm -hmm. I'm interested in people who are doers, not talkers. I'm interested in people who are committed to just doing a startup, which on the balance of probability will never work. Um, people who just sit around and say, I've got this great idea. I have no interest in it. So I need to try and find, and I need to find people who have a way to demonstrate to me that they want to do this, mm -hmm. or they've done it before, or they're committed to what it means to be a startup or an entrepreneur. Yeah. So in your instance, you hustled me and also you had a clear demonstration of you knew what it felt like to start and run a business, mm -hmm. yeah? So those are the sorts of people we try to, to work with. Um, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I'm not likely to accept people who just turn up and say, I've got a good idea, can you give me some money and I'll do this program. Yeah, so basically you're still screening for people, right? For right kind of people, yeah. but uh, in order to validate this person or the team you like yeah. see if they can have they done something yeah so so my off the record he said on video I the way I select is the four following criteria I look for smart people I look for smart people who've worked together in a team for a period mm -hmm. so it sounds silly but I find that when you put two rock stars in a room like 10 minutes before the start of the program they tend to fall out Pretty they much they tend to fall apart. Fall apart really quickly in the program. Uh, I prefer to have a stable team that know each other and work together for a period. Mm -hmm. They don't mind it when they start swearing and shouting at each other. I then look for commitment, which is, what have you done? Yeah. Already. Already. Yeah. I mean, even if it's rubbish, I'd like to see you've done something. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the last one is actually the idea. And the idea I tend to look at is, is it an interesting problem or opportunity? Um, and is it in a big, big market? And big not because of being investable, but big in the sense that it allows you to move around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not so tight an idea that if it doesn't work, then there's nowhere to go. I want to be able to find a market where if that didn't work, you can try something else, and if that doesn't work, you can try something else. So, just so you have a space to change. Yeah. To change exactly. it. It's not often people change markets completely, but what you do see is people, how they address a market, or what the product does in the market, is the thing that's important. Okay.
Cool. I think this is it. Thanks again uh, for Thanks, being Matt. Nice. Yeah. Cheers, Matt. Cheers. Cheers.